I think I eat a mandarin like every morning. Gotta get that vitamin C. <laughs> um, I also have these on my wall and I thought to put the cards on there as a way to manifest their energy. <laughs> so I have the sun, the lovers and wheel of fortune. Um, like I want to manifest this whole like you know bright and joyous energy and you know this idea of partnership and bliss and also to have opportunities and to say yes to opportunities as they arise um, but it's been there for probably almost a month now and I was wondering whether I should change change it up a bit but I think these are my favorite cards, so I'm just gonna leave them there. <laughs> to share um, a couple of books that I finished reading earlier this week The Hour of the Star and Agua Viva, um, which translates to Living Water. Um, so, the first one I read was Hour of the Star. Living in the slums of Rio and eking out a living as a typist, Maccabee loves movies, Coca Cola, and her philandering rash of a boyfriend. She would like to be like Marilyn Monroe, but she is ugly, underfed, sickly, and unloved. She has no future and no sense of who she is. For her, reality is too enormous to grasp. Yet telling her story is the narrator Rodrigo S.M., who tries to direct Maccabee's fate, but, but comes to realise that for all her outward misery, she is inwardly free, slyly subverting ideas of poverty identity, love, and the art of writing itself. Clarice Lispector's audacious last novel is a haunting portrayal of innocence in a bad world. And I love the first few lines of this book. It goes, all the world began with a yes. One molecule said yes to another molecule and life was born. But before prehistory, there was the prehistory of prehistory and there was the never and there was the yes. It was ever so. I don't know why, but I do know that the universe never began. Make no mistake, I only achieve simplicity with enormous effort. And the other one was, yeah, Agua Viva. In Agua Viva, Clarice Lispector aims to capture the present. Her direct, confessional and unfiltered meditations on everything from life and time to perfume and sleep are strange and hypnotic in their emotional power and have been a huge influence on many artists and writers including one Brazilian musician who read it 111 times. Despite its apparent spontaneity, this is a masterly work of art, which rearranges language and plays in the gaps between reality and fiction. Um, I love knowing that somebody read this book 111 times. And what I really loved about this book is at the very beginning, um, the Spectre's kind of, you know, musing on these tensions between different creative processes. So she speaks about painting versus writing. There's one quote that goes, all of me is writing to you and I feel the taste of being and the taste of you is as abstract as the instant. 
I also use my whole body when I paint and set the bodiless upon the canvas. My whole body wrestling with myself. You don't understand music, you hear it. So hear me with your whole body. When you come to read me, you'll ask why I don't keep painting. And my exhibitions, since I write so rough and disorderly, it's because now I feel the need for words. And what I'm writing is new to me because until now my true word has never been touched. The word is my fourth dimension. I really love these um, yeah, meditations on writing and painting at the very beginning of the book because throughout, um, she's really focused on this idea of getting to the essence of something. I do get a sense of her frustration or her, um, like a desire to put things into words probably one of the books that I reread over and over again. At the moment I'm reading An Apprenticeship um, or The Book of Pleasures, also by the Spectre. A girl named Laurie who yearns for love yet is scared of herself and of connecting with another human. When she meets Ulysses, a professor of philosophy, she is forced to confront her fears. As both of them will learn to be worthy of another person, they must first be fully themselves. The book of which Clarice Lispector said, I humanise myself. An apprenticeship is about the ultimate unknowability of the other in a relationship and what it means to love and be loved. Um, so I'm really excited to yeah, get through this and devour this one as well. Anyway, that was my little book chat for this morning. I hope you're having a good day. And I am going to go now to finish my coffee, eat my mandarin, <laughs> and get some writing done.